Hey guys, BBI here. I want to stop and say thanks thanks for tuning in and checking out whatever the video is about that's about ready to come up next. If you could take a minute and hit subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you enjoy what you've seen here, make sure to hit the like button. We'd greatly appreciate your support. Anyhow guys, all that aside, let's get on with the show. All right, so please forgive me on the crudity of the audio for this video. But I am standing out in the middle of a parking lot right next to a five-lane road. So what I wanted to talk about today was and is is the Maxwell Supercapacitor and how to install it in your mobile and how it actually affects your system. Now, I get many, many, many phone calls about this, about how do I install it, how do I charge it, and I want to cover it. So in this particular installation, we have a Mechman 370-amp alternator. Now the electrical system in this truck is a standalone system. <clears throat> has a single alternator, charges three Hawker A Core tank batteries, made by Armor Safe. Okay, so our charge leads come in from the alternator, and they cross link. So the positive rail goes here, and the negative rail goes over there. Now on the output side. Our negative rail goes over there, and our two positive leads go over there. Remember, in this particular setup, because we're consuming roughly 500, 600 amps worth of current, we're using the batteries and the supercapacitor to support our voltage as our storage devices. So we're gonna have a larger run of cable going out to our consumption point, which is our amplifiers. We have another secondary ground wire that goes off and goes to the frame to that side. Okay, so now let me close this up. Okay, we're gonna come in here. Both of our positive charge rails and both of our grounds, one is frame, the other one's continuous, that way we don't have a ground loop. Comes up and hits the supercapacitor. <clears throat> now this is really important. Everybody seems to get this wrong. They put the supercapacitors in, then they put the batteries in. That's not how this works. Actually, this truck, because the way it's set up now, this is this was an add-on in our test platform, you'd want to go down to just one battery and have multiple supercapacitors. If you think about how a battery works and how an alternator works, the alternator pushes up on the charge curve, right? And when the voltage drops down to a low 12.5, that's when you're running on the battery storage. Up until that happens, you're running off the alternator. So, your batteries, the more batteries you have, actually pull amperage away from its ability to be able to charge the supercapacitor, which is your most important thing. You have your positive rails that come in, and then you have your positive rails that go out. The very last thing that touches anything before it hits the amplifiers is the supercapacitor. Let's see if we can widen the shot up, I can't. So you put your supercapacitor as close to your load as you possibly can. Now we've got two 170 amp Anderson clips, but we got them double pulled. That means I can put 170 amps positive through both sides of this. And that's just to feed this amplifier, okay? So this is gonna pull roughly about 400 amps-ish. That's gonna pull another 100 amps. That's a one by four. And we're gonna run with a 5,000 watt slug and a 100 watt slug and reflect. Okay, let me close this door up too. Now this is real simple. Real simple setup. This is gonna be our reflect slug. It's gonna be our forward slug. And that's the actual voltage inside the amplifier. Okay, this is going to be our Mechman charge system, our external voltage regulator. Let's see how this works. See, we're at 14.7, 14.6, right? I can start turning that voltage regulator up, and it doesn't matter how far I twist it. As the cap charges, it takes a long amount of time for the voltage to inrush into the capacitor because it's like a giant, giant bucket of current. It sucks it up, but it can discharge it immediately. So the idea is to provide enough capacitance storage at the voltage that you want to achieve. It's really critical. The voltage you want to achieve. 
Now, <clears throat> they make those capacitors in single cell devices. So you can create your own capacitor by stacking up the cells. That one's got five cells in it, works out to be 16 volts. You can add another couple cells to it and go all the way out to 20 if you want. Just saying. So you can build your own capacitor bank. You don't have to buy them in that pre-made aluminum case like what's here. But I did that for safety for my partner and we were just playing around with it when we first started installing it. This is the first one I ever put one of these in. <clears throat> in an optimized world, an optimized world, you'd want to have one alternator, one battery, one battery to help keep the voltage stable on the capacitors, and then have multiple capacitors. Next year, we're planning on removing all the batteries except for one, and we're going to build a capacitor bank with 10 of those capacitors in here. And we're going to see if we can link two 64 pills together to make a 128 transistor amplifier to run off of those super capacitors. So now we've got our caps are all charged up. Okay. Now I'm not going to hit the throttle. I'm not going to rev the motor or nothing. I'm simply going to reach back here, turn on the 2x4, reach down here, hit the 24 pill, and here's our output power. <laughs> 2500 bird. I'll turn the peak kit on to make it look fancy. <laughs> Gone. Okay. But that's not what this video is about. It's about the capacitors. So let's look at the internal voltage on the amp. <laughs> See how steady that is? Look at the out outrush voltage on the charge go up here to the, the Mechman alternator, regulator. Now we're pulling past what the alternator can do by about 200 plus amps and it's not falling on his face. So let's run the regulator up a little bit. Now remember we're at idle. We're not revving the motor up or nothing. So we turn the alternator up, the regulator, now in between the keys the capacitor is recharging here's the voltage inside the amplifier so now we're just going to touch our throttle brought up by 500 rpms so now we're at a thousand amps or thousand rpms right at 15 volts right Is a brick. Let's go ahead and turn our voltage up a little bit further. We're running solely off the capacitor. 100% off the capacitor. That's what's keeping the voltage stiff. Not the batteries, not the alternator, it's that outrush current from when you key down and go into transmission mode. The capacitor is providing that 500 amps worth of internal storage in the cap and allowing it to exit the capacitor immediately. The more storage you have, the better your system's going to run, but the more time you need to allow for the capacitor to charge. I hope that helps figure things out for people. I hope that clarifies what people think that they're going to get for results and they don't have unrealistic expectations. Me personally, I'd rather have two or three of these little bastards in my truck that I can pick up and carry with two fingers worth a, worth a whole bed of batteries back there. Add a leaf, more, you know, more freaking more weight, more weight, more weight, and then having to add springs and a higher play tire and all the other stuff that goes along with having batteries. And the batteries don't do you any good until you get to 12.5. That's if you have a 12.5 battery. Now, if you've got, let's say, some sixes and some eights and put it together and you can get a different voltage or a couple eights and you're going to run off the capacity of the batteries, you're doing the same thing. It's about storage, weight, and size, and safety. 
They rate the capacitors in millions of cycles, and that's all the way down to fully discharged. After talking with the guys at Maxwell Capacitor themselves, they say that they rate the thing in billions of cycles. Billions of cycles. You don't have to worry about the capacitor freezing. You don't have to worry about the capacitor venting hydrogen gas. You don't have to worry about the connections on your capacitor corroding. It is a static device. It requires zero F all maintenance. Just keep that in mind. Okay, guys, I just thought I'd run you over the Maxwell Supercapacitor and how it makes it work inside the system in a mobile. I appreciate you all tuning in. It works the same for car audio, by the way. That's where we got this technology from. So I just thought I'd throw it out there. Gentlemen, as always, my name is BBI. I appreciate you all. Bump, bump from the biggest mud duck in Idaho. I'll see you. Click, click.